Hey guys, so today I'm making this really pretty dress for my little girl. It can be a princess dress, a flower girl dress, whatever. It just depends on what fabric you're making it out of. I also made this same dress into a graduation dress for my little girl in a blue uh, silky fabric from Joann's. So the first thing I'm doing is tracing out the bodice block that I've made for her and I'm lowering that neckline and I'm also adding a seam allowance. And then I'm also going to lower the waistline um, about one centimeter here because it's a little bit short waist, short waisted on her. Now I'm doing the back. I'm making sure to leave extra there at the center back so I can add a seam allowance. And I'm also lowering the neckline in the back. And then when I got to the back, I decided to add two centimeters to the waistline just to ensure that it is um, long enough in the waist for her. I'm also adding a centimeter seam allowance at the center back so that we can have um, enough room for our closures and everything back there. Now I am going to start working on the heart portion. So I decided to go about two and a half inches down, uh, not two and a half, I apologize, one and a half inches down from the top and two inches up from the bottom. And then I'm drawing a heart shape here. In hindsight, I would have made my heart a little bit smaller because I mean, she's only three, so her back isn't, uh, isn't big enough for this big of a heart, but it worked out anyway. So now that I have both of my pieces done, I'm gonna go ahead and true my pattern pieces to make sure that they line up nicely. I noticed that I needed to add a little bit more at the, set of, at the front piece because I added two centimeters to the back and only one to the front. I'm also making sure that this uh, neckline curve there at the shoulder is nice and smooth. Now I'm working on the skirt. So I um, measured all of my pieces and they were six inches. So I times that by four because there's four pieces and I wanted to gather at a rate of five times. So um, that equals 120. So I decided that I wanted to cut a front piece and a back piece. So I will cut two pieces that are 60 by 14. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, leave me a comment down below and I'll try to explain it as best as I could. I mean, I can. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my pattern uh, pieces, making sure to leave the centimeter seam allowance around the heart. I forgot to, uh, to draft that in while I was doing it with a pencil, but I just cut it out. So I have my pieces done and here are the pieces cut out. Fabricwholesale.com very kindly sponsored this video, sending me the matte satin and the taffeta lining to create this look. I'm using lace from Joann's and fusible interfacing from Joann's as well. I decided not to cut out the heart here in the lace, but I don't have the brain power right now to figure out how this was gonna to go together, so I ended up cutting it out anyway. So I have all of my pieces fused. Well, I have the fusible interfacing fused to the satin, and now I'm going to cut the excess uh, fusible interfacing off just to make sure that we're sewing the proper centimeter seam allowances. After I have that cut off, I'm going to overlay the bodice pieces with the lace, and I'm going to pin them in place. Uh, don't try to do this without pinning and basting the lace on because it will shift and it's gonna look crazy. So make sure that you take the time to do this. These bodice pieces are very small, so it does not take long at all. If you guys need help with this basting kind of process, it is very similar to my underlining process that I have a video on, and I will link it uh, right here for you guys uh, to go ahead and check out if you need help with this process. So after that is done, I'm just doing that here to my front piece because um, I, did, I wanted to do some kind of special kind of um, overlay in the back, but uh, at this point you should do this to the back as well. So um, this is you should overlay your pieces and base them on cut and cut out the heart shape because there's no way that I could figure out to uh, do what I was planning on doing. So go ahead and base the lace here as well and then uh, continue following the steps. So you would pin all the way around like we did on the, the front piece and then base them on. Now I'm grabbing my front piece and I'm going to put them right sides together matching the shoulder seam and I'm going to pin that and sew that with a one centimeter seam allowance.
And I'm also going to do that same thing with the lining pieces. So I'm at my machine here and I'm sewing it with a one centimeter seam allowance, the face piece and the lining. And I'm going to go ahead and take that over to my sewing machine and press it open. Now it is time to um, start attaching the lining to the face. And this is the point where I realized hmm, this is not going to work. So I decided to go ahead and baste all around the um, the the back piece and cut out the hearts because I just could not figure out for the life of me. So here I have my lining on top of my face piece, right sides together. What I do first is I pin the center front and then I like to match the shoulder seams because it's very important for the shoulder seams to line up. And here's, like I said, where I realized this is not going to work. I have no idea. I wanted to um, have like a sheer portion um, like the lace piece where the heart was and then I was going to have that closed with buttons but the way that I was constructing this it just would not work so I decided to just go ahead and scrap it and just cut out the lace piece um, and just do it regular and it turned out really pretty my daughter really loves it here it is all us uh, all pinned together and I'm going to go ahead and sew all of the edges um, with a one centimeter seam allowance and I included the sewing footage here because I love watching people sew So I'm, I'm assuming that you guys like it too <laughs> So I am making sure to keep my corners really sharp uh, when I'm getting to my corners I'm lifting my pressure foot with the needle down and I'm turning the corner and I'm making sure to try to remove my pins as I go. I don't want my um, fabric to shift any, but I don't want to break any needles as well. And I'm making sure to take care um, of this, the heart section there at the back because I want my heart to be nice and crisp. And at the end, um, it was a little, oh, I'm talking too much. <laughs> right there at my center back, I'm stopping about two centimeters before the end of the center back because we still have to sew our zipper in and you can't sew a zipper in until you have a skirt in so I decided to just stop about two centimeters there from the back so I'm back stitching there and I have everything sewn and I'm going to go ahead and clip all of my curves and I'm going to snip into my shoulder seam allowance because it gets really bulky there and I just make sure that I'm clipping my corners as well and trimming down mostly all of my seam allowance um, around my heart piece because if you don't trim that down really well um, it's not going to turn out and it's going to it's going to look really bulky so make sure that you're trimming and taking care of all of these curves so that it turns out nice and smooth and it's nice and clean okay now it's time to turn the bodice right side out so i'm going to take a safety pin and i'm catching that to the face layer because it's strong enough I wouldn't catch it to the lining because it may fray, fray away. Um, and I'm going to turn um, the back pieces out into the front so everything's right side out. And I got this method uh, from Frox and Frolics. I love the way she constructs her bodices. It just makes so much sense to do it this way um, rather than uh, other ways that you can bag out the lining. So that's the way I do it. Uh, you guys should go check out her channel if you are not familiar with her. So, and you're gonna you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side I'm also taking the safety pin and making sure to really get in there and turn out that heart piece to make sure that it's nice and sharp and then I'm going to take it over to my ironing table and give it a really thorough press so this is what it looks like once it's all pressed out and I had a little boo-boo over at the iron where my steam was a little bit too hot and burned off a little bit of lining here in the front but that can, not lining, but lace, but that can be covered with embellishments. Um, if it was a client dress, I would definitely recut it and redo it. Now it's time to sew together the side seams. So I am matching the underarm seam and I'm making sure to um, have my seams open and I'm gonna pin that first and then I'm gonna pin up and down, uh, making sure to match uh, the ends of my pieces just to make sure that everything lines up and everything's nice and neat 
and then I'm going to take that to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew that together with a one centimeter seam allowance. And I also want to take this time out to thank the sponsor of this video. I mentioned them earlier. It's Fabric Wholesale Direct. They sell really good matte satin. I hauled some of their matte satin that I made my last Flower Girl dress from. And their lining, that was $1.99, y'all. They have really good stuff. They don't have just satin. They have lots of different fabrics on their website. I'll put their link in the description box for you guys to go ahead and check them out. Now that I have my side seam sewn, I'm showing you guys what it looks like. I am going to go ahead and snip into that underarm seam there because it's making my seam really bulky and I like that under there to be nice and clean and flat. And then I'm going to go ahead and take it to the, the ironing table and I'm going to press my seams open. And I'm going to also take care to really steam that underarm seam. I'm going to put a muslin cloth over it this time so we don't have any issues. Now I'm going to put my bodice to the side and I'm going to start working on my skirt pieces. I'm sewing my skirt pieces together with French seams because satin, we all know that satin frays. So if you guys not, are not familiar how to sew a French seam, you put your fabric wrong sides together and you sew it. I did a set, two centimeter seam allowance total. So I sewed it with a one centimeter seam allowance with the fabric wrong sides together and then I trimmed it down and then uh, turned it right side uh and put it right sides together made sure that the edges was the edge was nice and crisp and i sewed it with another one centimeter seam allowance and i'm doing the same thing for the lace pieces now it's time to hem i'm going to use a four inch horsehair braid and i'm sewing that one centimeter from the edge and then i'm flipping it over to the wrong side and i'm catch stitching it down making sure to only grab just a little bit of the satin and then I'm taking the lace overlay and the satin piece that we've already just hemmed and I'm basting them together there at the top. And now it's time to attach the skirt to the bodice. Make sure when you're doing this, your lining piece is out of the way because when I was not making this dress, when I was making my daughter's graduation dress using the same pattern, I had to unrip it like three or four times because I kept catching the lining and it's just so annoying. So I'm actually hand uh, gathering down this because it is really dense um, and I just prefer the look of hand, hand gathers. So I'm gathering down my hand and I'm making sure to pin the side seams together um, and I'm gonna gather it down in three portions. So the one back portion, the front portion and the other back portion and I'm making sure to match my seams because nothing is more important than having seams that match. And then I'm also making sure not to gather up onto where the center back is because we still need to install our zipper. So I am putting it um, together now and I'm sewing it with a one centimeter seam allowance, adjusting my gathers as I sew, making sure uh, that my machine is on a five millimeter stitch length because it has to get through all of these really dense gathers that are you know, layers and layers thick because it's really densely gathered. Now I am using the thread that I used previously, I'm recycling it and I'm gathering down the center front portion or the front bodice portion rather, uh, cause there's no, there's no seams in the front. And I'm making sure to gather that down to match between my side seams. And I'm going to pin that as well. Um, and then I'm going to put it back on my sewing machine and adjust the gathers as I stitch it on. And I'm also going to do that for the last back piece. So this is what it looks like when the skirt is sewn to the bodice. This is so cute guys, I'm getting so giddy. Anyway, now it is time to sew up my center back seam. I'm showing you guys how it will look when the lining is covering that. I decided not to line the skirt just because I thought it would be too thick. So I like to match my waistline because that's another important thing. And then I'm figuring out how long I want my zipper to be so that I'm going to kind of pinch there, matching my waistline, going all the way down, figuring out how long I want my zipper to be. And then I'm going to put a snip there so that I can turn it and make it right, uh, face right sides together. And then I'm going to sew up the center back seam. And I like to sew my center back seam before I insert my zipper. It always turns out better for me that way. I know a lot of people probably um, put their zipper in and then sew their center back, but I, I cannot get, I can't get jiggy with that y'all. I can't, it don't work for me. It looks lopsided after I do it. So 
once that's done mind you i just sewed just the satin now i'm mar um, figuring out where the zipper stops again there on the lace and i'm showing the lace um separately i don't want them to be together at the back i wanted to sew two separate center back seams so i'm doing that as well and i'm also uh, pinning the lace to um, my center back there where the zipper is going to be to make sure that there's no shifting when I'm sewing in um, the center back seam. Now I'm going to work on sewing in the zipper. Y'all don't kill me. I know that it's a white zipper on wet fabric, but all I had was a white zipper. So let's pretend like it's Christmas, okay? And I also decided to add some bias binding to my center back seam just to make sure that it can withstand the craziness of a three-year-old. Okay, now that we have that all sorted out, I am turning my lining downwards to make sure that it's covering my seam allowance. And I'm going to cut a strip of bias binding out of the matte satin. And I'm going to use that to bind the bottom edge of the taffeta. Now, you don't have to do this on all fabrics, but this taffeta does fray quite a bit. So I want to make sure that it's nice and neat inside and that it is durable. So I'm going to uh, put bias binding. I also added a hook and eye closure at the top of the heart por uh, portion because I didn't want it to actually close with buttons. I just wanted it to look like it did. So I sewed the buttons on there and then I closed it with actual hook and eye. And now I am pinning on the bias binding and I'm going to sew one centimeter from the bottom edge and then I'm going to turn that out and then tuck the, the raw edges inwards and then I'm going to slip stitch that down to the ruffles, uh, like well, the, the base of the ruffles there of the skirt to hide that uh, waist seam. So this is what it looks like when the lining is sewn down to the, the base of the skirt. Super neat guys. And I decided that I wanted to disguise this white zipper pull a little bit more. So I'm adding two more buttons to the top there that will kind of disguise the zipper pull. Um, yeah, so um, I'm using a, a double thread and I'm sewing the buttons on, making sure that it's not in the way of the zipper, but it still disguises the, the zipper if that makes sense. So this is what it looks like when it's all done. This is a super cute little dress, guys, and I'm so glad uh, that I was able to make this for my little girl because ever since I made it, she has not taken it off. So mom win, right? As always, thank you guys so much for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next one.